All right, stock market technical analysis. Let's get right into the charts. Give me a thumbs up if you find some value here. Uh, we'll start out with triple Qs today. So yesterday the Fed reported, they said they're gonna be money printing forever. It's kind of the same story. And basically what they, had, what they said was uh, the highest probability of what the market thought they were gonna say. Interest, they weren't going to raise interest rates. They did not announce any kind of long-term bond buying program uh, over to buy the long end of the curve. Uh, uh, what do they call that? They call that um, Operation Twist or um, Yield Curve Control. There was none of that. So what does that mean to the market? Well, tech today gapped down. So yesterday, tech, they ramped it up pretty much to resistance right here. See the, form, see the resistance right there at 324.50? We hit it there, hit it there, hit it there. And yesterday they ramped it right up to there, got pretty close, but never really broke. Today they gap it back down. So, you know, that that's uh, something to look for. What I, at this moment in time, I would say, you know, we look for the top of the range, obviously at 324, a break above that. And then we're likely gonna run up and fill the gap up here at 330. Uh, it wouldn't be that far away at that point. Or we break the bottom of the range, which I'm, I'm thinking was pretty much yesterday's lows. Uh, we've also got a reaction. You can see the reactions that we've had right around that line. We held there as resistance and it was support. Then we gap below. Then we're, we're chopping around along this line right here of 315. You know, we'll just call it 315 flat. So a breakdown of that level and an hourly close below there, then... I think we're heading lower at that point. You know, I would say if we break that, I would say we're likely going to make the next leg down in what appears to be a downtrend in the queues. Here's the daily chart. Uh, you can see clearly recently we made our first leg down. We had a back, you know, we had a rally. But if we start to break down, I suspect we're going to actually roll all the way down and make another leg lower down at this 285, 286 area. All right, 285, 286 comes all the way back to if you look at the weekly chart comes all the way back to the price channel of the bull market since 2009 lows in tech all right not in the mark not in the s p 500 but tech all right so you can see the upper end of that price channel right there we've held lots of you know that was resistance all along and zooming in we overshot that kick you know held support bounce held support bounce and so again if we break down i think we're likely heading down there um, and possibly going to break that level, but for now, we will just target that as the next area of uh, support. So again, going back, what to look for, a break of, you know, 315 flat, hourly close below there, and I suspect we're heading lower. If we hold within this range, we could obviously still run up and fill that gap. So it's anybody's game right now. I mean, we're at support. So again, you got to see that support go before, uh, you know, for a sell signal, for the next sell signal. Uh, and so that's how I trade that. Moving on to the SPY. SPY is just chopping around resistance. All right, the blue line, you go back to the daily or, or really the weekly, and you got the 2009 lows right there. Ran, ran up, held support all through here, multiple, multiple tags through there, broke. And then once we broke support, it's been resistance ever since, since 2018. So ran up, back test resistance, failed, run up, back test, and that's where we're at right now, just back testing it again. So I think it's likely we're going to get rejected here. Uh, but, you know, right now, it, it they're just kind of, you know, just chopping around this area. So no trade for me on this one. I'm just waiting to see confirmation that we you're going to get rejected. Uh, if they overshoot this, which I think is very possible that they can start to bounce up and make it look like they're going to recover this, uh, look for that impulsive move higher to fail. If it does not fail and they bounce, you know, move higher and it can hold, then something different is happening. So we'll want to really analyze that if and when we see that. And if we break down, I think we're heading down to this 387. Uh, you know, it's about 387.50 area uh, and probably get a bounce there. Small caps, really on the small caps, you look at the daily and I'll just kind of mark it out. Um, so 
This right here is a divergent high, all right? That's a di divergent high price action. See the lower momentum and higher price. Momentum is dropping and price is going higher. So we have negative divergence in the IWM on the daily chart. That's the first step, you know, that's the first thing you wanna look for. We have a trend line to track, which is right here on the daily. You see it walking up the trend line. Had a false breakdown or a bear trap, but all we did is ran up and put in a new divergent high. So a break of this trend line, an impulsive breakdown would be the next sell signal on this. If we get it, I think we're heading straight down to this lower trend line down here, which is, that's coming off your March 2020 lows. We had a reaction there, reaction there. It's a pretty, you know, that's your more major support. So I think we roll down and hit that, get a bounce down there. That could, that might be the area where this wants to hold. I don't know, but I would say we get the sell signal here. It's good for a drop at least down to that trend line. So that's what I'd be looking for. The negative divergence tells me we're going to get that relatively soon. Financials still holding strong. They're in an uptrend. Here's your trend line right here. Uh, no real solid negative divergence showing up uh, on the daily. So in general, I just don't see anything. Uh, I don't see anything bearish on this, you know. And if you don't see anything bearish, then then it, you know it's likely going to just continue with the trend. So I just see upward price uh, as of right now. And no, no indicator that tells me that we're going to get a reversal uh, anytime soon. So moving on, uh, energy is continuing to kind of sell off. Not super impulsive yet, but we are selling a little bit today. Uh, and we did have a break of trend right there. So there's your breakdown. So I think energy is going to pull back some more. Energy has been on a real tear. So I would look for, I would look for maybe a pullback you know, potentially down to this 42 area, you know, well, here's the levels that I've got so far. We've got a level here at 44, it's about 45, but 44.75. Uh, we had a reaction there, reaction there, we gapped over that. So I think that's the first stop, probably get a bounce there. And if it's gonna pull back more, you know, it could pull all the way back to this 34 area, but I would say probably, you know, 42, somewhere right in there is where I'd look at. Um, Longer term, I'm bullish on oil, but you know, to me, it looks like there's it's gonna pull in a little bit. And just to point out that some of these top Fang stocks, the leaders of the last, you know, the leaders since 2009. If you look at really where all the gains came from, for the most part, in the last, uh, you know, since 2009, it's pretty much the Fang stocks, and they are they're stuck in the mud. They're not going up. They're just flat. You can see here, uh, Google. It's just flat. It's been flat since, you know, early February. Amazon has gone nowhere since last July in 2020. Just flat. Uh, Microsoft, you know, Microsoft has moved up. Uh, it's been kind of struggling recently. Uh, you know, it moved up here and then it's just been kind of struggling. So, and then Apple, you know, Apple's starting to kind of move down actually. Looks like Apple was uptrending. We had a clear trend line right here broke trend and we've been downtrending ever since you can see lower high lower low lower high right here now you make a new lower low so as far as i can tell apple's downtrending uh and if apple's downtrending it's likely the tech's going to continue to downtrend so just something to take note of uh we did have bullish divergence here on the daily there it is right here so that's a divergent low and we did get a bounce so you need to see that lower low, obviously, to continue the trend. But ultimately, uh, you know, you have to take a position uh, if you're gonna, you know, if you're trying to make money, then you need to take a position. Uh, you know, so uh, I don't have anything in this one. I'm looking at other tech stocks for the trade here, but just something to watch. Okay, guys, and before I move on, we'll look at some individual trades. But if you guys want me to look at anything, if you guys have a if you guys have something to look at, then go ahead and leave that in the comments below. Uh, any kind of specific stocks or charts you want me to look at, and I'll and I'll take a look and see if I can't include the interesting ones in in a video. All right, getting back into it. Tan uh, can just continues to look like we're trending down. Again, downtrends take time. We follow the slope of hope. So what that means is when you start a downtrend, you're going to get bounces as you hit support. 
but that doesn't mean that the downtrend is over. And, and by the time you realize that, you know, it, it's, it's usually too late to take a position by the time it's obvious to everyone. Usually you want to take a position when it's not obvious. And TAN continues to look good to the downside. I see no indication that we're, we're going to reverse this trend yet. So if we get back down, we get down to this area, you know, we bounced right here last time. So clearly they bounced off this candle right here. So I can just move that up. Uh, and there's our level to watch. If we get back down to 81 area, I think we'll break right through it. Probably bounce up the 200 day, which is sitting at about 73.55. Uh, you know, I think it's very realistic to get a bounce up the 200 day, at least the initial tag of that. So we'll watch for that for now. PayPal still looks good to the downside. So you can see here this trend line coming off the March 2020 lows. And we held support all through here. I've got it marked out in blue. We had a sell signal right there. Uh, a back test so far, kind of starting to roll over. Now this one could go either way in the short term. All right, this could rally up and do a full back test of this trend line, or we could break down. So Again, it's not the best area right here to just take a position. Ideally, if you get the back test, you, you could short at resistance up here, or I would just probably wait for a sell signal or a break of this level, 225.60. All right, a break of that, and I think it's likely we're heading down to the next level of support, which, it, well, we'll probably bounce up the 200 day, all right, so that, that seems to be a, a reaction area. Um, but ultimately, if we continue to downtrend, I think we're going to head down next level of support at 176. And then if we break below that, then we're going to gap fill most likely all the way down here at about 129.94. All right. That's a big drop. And that's likely going, you know, there will be big movement in the in the tech sector if we're going to get that drop. So I'm not saying we're going to get it, but there's some levels to watch there. Chewy continues to break trend. So here's your trend line there on Chewy. We had negative divergence right there. So this was all divergent high price action. We we're coming down to that major, sorry, my line's moving. We broke the trend line and back tested and continuing, you know, continuing to roll over. So ultimately this could back test some more, but we're still back testing, right? You're just running up, hitting resistance and failing. So until you recover that resistance, it's a sell the rip, uh, you know, it's a sell the rip chart. And so I see this going lower, uh, probably heading down. It's not the cleanest chart. It's not my favorite uh, trade idea, although it, it does have clean negative divergence. It gets a little messy down in here. Uh, so I suspect we're going to hit the 200 day bounce, but Probably going to get down into this area around 50 bucks. AMD, I really like this one. And this is setting up for a potentially large move to the downside. What am I looking at? Well, look, you've got 2016 lows. You've got this really clean trend line right here. Uh, this has been in a bull market since 2016. And you're basically hit support, hit support right there. We hit it, hit it there, hit it there. All those reactions. And you can see what's going on recently. We put in a big negative divergence on the daily. So this was all divergent high price action and we broke trend. So you come down, there's your breakdown of trend. You do a back test and continuing to, you know, stay below resistance. So until they can recover that, uh, I would look for more downside. Uh, and we're at the 200 day, which is, you know, right there at about the 200 day sitting at 79.50 today. Or no, sorry, 79.80 we're basically at it right there at, uh, sorry, it's at 79.50 and we're at 79.80. So we're holding the 200 day, uh, a break of that 200 day and likely that's gonna set this thing in motion straight down to uh, 58.75. That's, that's the next area of major support. You can see that was major resistance. Then when we finally broke above that, it was just this quick move up. So if we break back down into that range, I think it'll be a pretty quick move down. Things to watch. All right, ZG. So we've got a head and shoulders pattern and I had this thing marked out a while ago. Um, I pointed it out, I think I pointed it out all the way back here and the charts come in and filled out that head and shoulders and it's pretty much perfect so far. So I just left that up there. 
So what I'd look for now, if this is gonna play out as a head and shoulders, I'd wait for a break of the neckline. This is how you trade a head and shoulders, uh, which is about 132, you know, about 132. We'll just call it 132 flat. Uh, a, a daily close below that, that's a break of the neckline. And then th the major target would be you take the top of the head down to the neckline, and that's a move. And then you just kind of extend that from the break of the neckline. Sorry, my lines move a little because I have log scaling on, but it's basically about right there, uh, down to 90, we'll call it 89.50. That would be the measured drop. And that would be a drop from the neckline breakdown of about 30%. So that one's looking good so far to the downside. Uh, we got to continue to watch that, but that looks good. I mean, just scrolling through a lot of these tech stocks, they all look like they had a bounce off their first level of support and they're all continuing the downtrend. Look at Peloton here. You can see clearly moving down, uh, we bounced and we're continuing down. We're at the 200 days, so you got to break that, but a lot of these look like they had a bounce and they're now all continuing to sell off. Here's Etsy. Uh, you know, Etsy hasn't quite sold off yet. So I think there's a lot more downside in Etsy. Uh, we haven't seen that big downside movement yet in this one for some reason. Uh, but as I zoom in, you can see here, we're just kind of holding this trend, this line right here at about 214. It's kind of a messy chart, this one. So uh, this one, you know, we have negative divergence. See the big clean negative divergence on the daily. Uh, that tells me that this is just not, we haven't got the downside move. So you have this trend line right here that we were walking up. We broke, back tested, failed. A little bit of a bounce, but it was a lower high. So here's your high, here's your lower high. So now we look for a lower low, all right? And that just continues the downtrend. Uh, that's what I like. I like this one to the downside because of the negative divergence and the fact that it really hasn't sold off like some of these other ones have. I think there's more downside in this one to come. And here's my trading platform showing cues. We're starting to impulsively break. We'll see if there's any follow through. But again, I suspect, you know, selling after the Fed is gonna is going to signal what the institutions are doing. They, they're not gonna take positions before the Fed, but they'll wait till after the Fed and then they'll take a position. If we see selling after the Fed, then that's that's institutional selling most likely. So you wanna be on the side of the institutions. I think that's where you have the highest probability of, of uh, making a profit. And so we're looking for that breakdown. Uh, it might come today, might come tomorrow, we'll see. Uh, and then just to wrap, all these gold stocks still look good to the upside. They're still, you know, they still are are looking very good. So Barrett Gold, you can see here, uh, bullish falling wedge right there. We made a new low and that was a divergent low. So on the daily, I don't know why I don't have it marked out, but there's your bullish divergence and you have a divergent low. We're now bouncing up and we've broken out out of this bullish falling wedge. So I think we're going to continue to the upside. Now, a lot of people think miners sell off on the market sell off. And I think, a, you know, in the initial move, maybe that happens because you get some sort of a liquidity event where, where uh, you know, just if there's forced selling. But this doesn't look like forced selling. And in fact, there, there, this might be kind of safe, safe haven positioning because so, gold can be a safety a safe haven, gold can move up if the market's gonna have a prolonged downturn and it's not just a quick liquidity event. Uh, if there's gonna be a prolonged downturn, then people will run to gold for safety as a safe haven play. And uh, the miners can, can will likely move up if there is gonna be that safety play. So Barrett Gold, you can see, I mean, look at Newmont. It's up, you know, it's broken above its 200 day moving average, uh, you know, looks looks bullish. And not all the miners are up today. I mean, the smaller ones, they can gyrate a little bit, but technically here's sand. Look at the downtrend right here in sand. Uh, bullish divergence down here, and we've broken out above that trend line and still holding up there. So again, you can get a pullback and back test, but as long as you're in the, above this area and holding, it's still bullish and it's likely gonna move higher. Uh, here's Harmony Gold, just right there at the downtrend line, so it's at major resistance. You need to see that breakout or impulsive impulsive break higher as the next buy signal on that one. 
uh, and then wheat and precious metals. I mean, look at that. It's still holding, you know, it's it's down slightly, but it was down more today. The buyers are buying it. Still hold, holding uh, bullish and, you know, kind of looks like it's bull flagging. So I think a lot of these, when I look across the board, they all look bullish. Here's Franco Nevada. You can see this downtrend line we've broken above. Here, you know, kind of hanging out above there. Agnico Eagle. You know, we, we had the sell off and that was your bullish divergence down here. And we're now recovering some of these broken supports. So in general, that looks good down. You know, this one's down 2% today, but it was up really, you know, it was up huge today. So it's just, you know, having a little bit of a pullback. Uh, but the trend still looks good. Still looks up right now. Okay, guys, that's all I got. Leave me a thumbs up. Take my course. If you haven't done so, I leave a link in the description below this video. And I will catch you guys on the next video.